Welcome back to the off season, season three, episode three, where today I am in Clamwera GA Club, where I'm going to be speaking to five time All Ireland winner and current captain of the Dublin team, Carla Rowe. Yes, Carla. How are, How are we? How are we? How are we? <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. How are you It's good to be here in Clamwera for uh, episode three. Have you seen any episodes so far? Have seen a few, yeah. They're brilliant now and great to get some nice weather as well. Brilliant. It's absolutely beautiful here and the pitch is looking top class. We're going to go for a bit of a chat and uh, deep dive into your career, okay? <laughs> Perfect. Good stuff. Okay, Carla. So, like any other episode, I try to dive in to underage. But you're underage probably had a little bit of a different twist. You never really got involved in the, in the big ball till you were, what, 12, 13, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I was 13 when I moved to the Knoll. Um, yeah, so I moved to the Knoll, uh, I think it was about fourth class in primary school. Okay. And, you know, yourself, a small kind of rural village where the club is in the centre of the heart, heart of that. So, yeah, all my friends were disappearing on Wednesdays and Friday nights and I didn't know where they were going. So. Yeah, you know, they're always trying to recruit, so got in, jumped into the neighbour's car, and that was me then, Gaelic for forever. And where were you before then? Were you moving out in Lusk? Is that I right? actually wasn't too far, yeah. No. I was only in Lusk. I just, I don't know, I did gymnastics for okay. years. Um, and we did Olympic handball in school, but just never did team sports. I always have really clear memories of sports day in school yep. and loving it. So I always loved sports and that and competing, but just never got into the Gaelic. Right, okay. And when you came in 13, who was there anybody that brought the sport to you or was it the school is there anybody that was maybe a figure that maybe introduced you into the Gaelic football at the start is it coming from your family or where is it coming from no it was literally just friends and oh, neighbours okay. were going yeah um, like my dad played a bit when he was in secondary school I think right. but, but again not massively um, so definitely didn't come originally from family it was just the the girls were going and I, yeah I joined I always remember two girls who Grania Barr and Anuna White they were playing for the county at the mm. time when I started joining about under 14s and 15s and they were probably the two that I was then chasing the whole time. Right, and did you take to it really quickly? Were you thrown into maybe development squads at that age, even with Dublin, or did you have to do your 13, 14, 15 all through the club before you got anywhere near Dublin? Yeah, exactly. Um, no, didn't have any development squads. Uh, Jerry Barrett was the name of our manager from the time I started until only a couple of years ago. He okay. was with 13s, 14s, ladies, uh, the whole way up for a good few years. So. With the way it was, because we were such a small club, like we, I played when I was 13, you were playing for the 14s yeah. or 16s. When yeah. we were 16, we were playing ladies. Yes. Um, just for numbers. But yeah, that was it. That was the, the Dublin scene came about. I remember the first, when I was 15, it would have been the first year of under 16s. It was yeah. a bit differently done back then. Um, I remember the girls were going to train and Dublin train and they were leaving club training and going to Dublin. And I was like, where are they headed? I want mm. to kind of figure that out because they were the ones I was always trying to compete yeah. against and the girls told me on the team they're going to Dublin training they go every Friday and Saturday I had okay. no clue I didn't know county existed I hadn't been really no trips to Crow Park you know the way these days yeah. kids go into Crow Park and the parents bring them in at four yeah, and they love yeah. it there was, there were, I didn't have any of that I didn't really know it was there and um, so yeah when I was 15 I wanted to try and get onto it and I remember the trials were coming up and I was practicing and doing all the rest and the trials came and went and I never got picked to go on trial. Okay. So yeah, it was a bit of a, that was probably the first time I experienced disappointment in trying to yeah. aim for something like that. So I, I went and asked my manager, what is it I need to work on? And he told me, and the following year then, I was the older age of 16. Gotcha. And I was put up for trials and, and I was picked that year and made captain of the under 16s as well then. In under 16 Dublin? Yeah. Right, okay. So that would have been my first time being exposed to it and yeah my first time getting on it then right so just to talk about your club at underage yeah uh, you mentioned it's a small uh small club which i would say now has grown and grown probably with the catchment area just tell me a little bit about the knoll um and and how you fit it in at that age and has it grown over the last 10 years in a lady standpoint has the club grown through or is it still quite small at under 14s under 16s um overall no it obviously has grown like there's been a couple of small uh, housing estates that have been put in in the village and that's been amazing yeah. because you know you're bringing in new people maybe from different clubs with different ideas and mm -hmm. everyone as i said it really is still the heartbeat of the of the whole village and um, the club is and it's a great way for new people to get to to know more people in the village yeah. as well so um 
but yeah the club has definitely grown see the underage now so what they did is to try and to try and stop all the smaller there's Ballybuckle yeah. there's Garristown and then there's us Clamwera um, and to try and stop it that you don't have you have kids at eight playing for the tens they three of them have amalgamated underage right so they're called St Peter's yeah um, and it just means that every child has they've done that with the, with the boys now right up the minor as yeah well. the whole way boys and girls I didn't know that okay yeah. yeah so it's actually worked out really really well for all three clubs all three clubs would have lost players by the time they come to you know that drop off age yeah. with girls particularly um, because at 13 and 12 they're playing under 14s they're playing under 16s yeah. and you know that's really hard for confidence yeah. never mind just playing at your own age group right okay so yeah they've joined um and there's the no conflict age. there is there no like no in fairness uh the whole thing is set up brilliantly all clubs were in agreement that there's you know there's no poaching of players every player once they get to minor they go back to their respective Brilliant. clubs there's been no issues at all so um and it, like everyone's so local yeah. you know you'd know you know all the people with Garristown and they're all coaching They're only over the road, aren't they? Yeah, literally? Just five minutes that way and five minutes that way. So. Okay. Well, that's and actually interesting but, and maybe a lot of clubs can learn from that. Yeah, it is. For smaller clubs, it's really good um, because we've just seen it then. We have like under 16s and under 14s teams and they're able to compete in the Division 1s. Yeah. You know, so that brings players on, boys and girls. It allows them to get exposed to the higher level and we see now more uh, of the younger pl players or um, boys and girls, they're going and doing trials. They're getting yeah. onto county teams, yeah. which is great to see as well. Then, brilliant. Okay, now you talked about other sports, uh, gymnastics being one of them. Was there a conflict there as you got older? You had to give up, obviously, one of them. Um, how long did you go with, stick with gymnastics, or was it just from the moment you say you were thirteen, football was all? Yeah, um, I, I, when I moved house, I stick, stuck with gymnastics for a while. I loved it. I was over in Scaries and in fairness, like I'd still be in touch with some of the people doing different things and they'd always wish me luck um, on big day games. So mm. they're, they were really, really supportive. Um, it just came that it's like that, the way some 13 year olds fall away from Gaelic football. I just fell away from, from gymnastics. Um, I haven't got injured for years, so I always do. I always did think, was it the gymnastics and the flexibility yeah, well, that helped me? There's a lot of research there now. Like, I have a wee girl myself, and the goal is to get her straight in gymnastics as quick as possible. Yeah. And then maybe, you know, get her to play different sports. I think it's very important for young girls, young, young boys, to play different multiple sports. And then when they get to 13, 14, then they can branch off and put a focus in, in one of them. So you probably, by accident, it worked out really well for you because you're already going into football really athletic and um, a lot of people when they're just 13 starting off with just Gaelic football like that is a hard thing to do but for you to take it really really quickly because you weren't playing you weren't playing soccer or anything like it was just no. gymnastics football yeah that was it really and then three years later you're captain of the Dublin under 16s uh, yeah so that's the story in itself well I think uh, yeah look it is um, I think I was always quite agile and I was always kind of out of all my family I would have been the one out mucking around in the garden yeah. or, you know wanting to run a out and play games and stuff like that so I was always into yeah. exercise I suppose but yeah um, I do think the gymnastics probably helped I was quite agile mm. I was quite small when I started uh, even as a teenager like you build up after a couple of years but I was quite agile and small and I think maybe fast so that helped me but I do know my dad said I was I was terrible to watch so yeah I don't think <laughs> I don't think I was too good at 13 14 you put all that energy into football then yeah I was probably just quite determined um, I didn't like not being good at something, so mm -hmm. I remember going out. We we didn't have a massive back garden, but I remember going out and running around the garden and practicing solos. And then mm -hmm. we had a little small area that was bigger, going around and practicing mm -hmm. solo and on that. So have you many in your family? Uh, there's four. So there's my older sister, myself, a younger sister, and a younger brother. Oh, okay, and are they in the football? <coughs> no, they're actually not. No. Not one of them. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, very good. So yeah, I'm definitely an outlier. No, uh, my older sister played with me for a couple of years, but she gave it up. My younger sister actually came in then at later she only came in a couple of years ago and she was playing with the ladies and stuff like that and my younger brother he played a little bit when he was younger but he's actually into rugby so right okay he plays the rugby yeah right. it's mad there has to be someone else who uh well, who, who if they picked it up and stuck it you've got all the all the football talent there from the family i'm no, i'm sure there's others they just <laughs> need to they need to get a bit fitter <laughs> so your club um they're they're intermediate at the minute but you had to work as a club to get there yeah he's won a junior a championship we did what year was that in there's a big smile on your face that was probably good memories back oh, then Jesus, the year now you're catching 20, me on the spot 14 i think it was 2012 someone's going to kill me now 2012 2013 i'm trying to think was it before um 
the Dublin seniors. I don't know. I can't remember the day. Not that I should. Old. I should know. Um, but yeah, it was some day that was unbelievable. Where was that again? Who was that against? What? Where was it played in? Yeah, it was in St. Moore's, and we played it in Parnell Park. Oh really? Yeah, so like, junior A championship in Parnell Park. Yeah, That's yeah. Quite, was that your first time playing in Parnell Park? Yeah, it would have been. Right. It was amazing. Yeah, it was just you know everyone from the club was there. The club hadn't been in the championship in years and years. I know the men's team won a junior championship, but don't ask me the date now because I can't remember my own. It was 19 something, so it was yeah. years ago. Um, a lot of the girls' dads yeah. who are here now, so you know their 50s and 60s were on the team. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was just everyone was there and. You know, you have your best friends who you've grown up with forever. Uh, so yeah, it was good memories. And even there's girls who I'm playing with now, and like they're only 15, 16, but their parents would tell us they were in the stand, yeah. and they'd say, "I want to be able to do this in a few years." Brilliant. And you have been competing at intermediate since. Yeah, yeah, we have. So uh, probably just had a couple of years where that St. Peter's development probably affected the ladies' team. We didn't have too many young girls coming up. Um, now you know yourself, mm. the older girls push on and you need to have the youth coming up to, to build on. So the last two years are probably the first two years where we've had 15, 16 okay. and minor girls. Still young, but definitely loads and loads of potential there um, to hopefully build with a few of us for a few more years. Brilliant, brilliant. So you spoke a wee bit on uh, under 16 Dublin. Who was your coach back then? So it was Fergal Brennan, uh, Damien Prout. And Pat, Str uh, sorry, Pat Ring from okay. Clan the Gale. So yeah, there was a nice mix. Uh, and did you stay with them for minors after that? Let's no, say? so changed then. We had them that one year. Um, and then the next year, minor, it was a different group. Actually, Jerry, who was my club manager yeah. or at the time, he was as involved with the minors as a selector. Mm -hmm. And it was Fintan O'Curry, uh, Ken Murphy. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we had FLOs in there as well, Deirdre Colgan and a few different ones along the way. We're always, always brilliant with the girls. Good stuff. And in under 16 level, um, were you just competing in, in, in the top teams with Cork and who else was around that era? It was actually Galway. Galway, um, Galway Cork. And the year we were there was Kerry. Uh, so we, under 16s, yeah, we did well. We, we won the Leinster final. We went on, you know, first year on a county panel, you think that's it, you're going to, this yeah. is easy, you're going to win. Um, but we went in an All Ireland final against. Against Kerry and under sixteen, yeah, under sixteen. Kerry, well, that's interesting. That you mentioned Galway and Kerry because between that time and let's say now, mm. Galway haven't won any senior All Irelands, and Kerry have won one, yeah, which is last year. Yeah. So it would be interesting to understand how Dublin went from winning five, yeah, in that time, whereas in that same age group, those girls that were winners under sixteen, did did Kerry and Galway go on to win then the minors that you were involved with? Uh, so Kerry were the under 16s, Galway were, we won one, so my first year minor, we bet Tyrone and Tyrone knocked out Cork. Okay. So it was probably, you know, it was, we thought it was going to be Cork, hopefully Dublin final. Yeah. Um, but Tyrone knocked out Cork and then we played Tyrone and bet them. And then my second year minor, that was Galway and Galway won the All-Ireland after a replay. Did you win All-Ireland in, in, against Tyrone then? Yeah. Oh, because so you have an All-Ireland so medal. So yeah, missed out on the under 16s, have an All-Ireland medal and then missed out on second year minor to double. Right, okay. And did you captain your last year at minor? No. No. No, no Molly that? Lamb was. So, uh, Lamb, yeah, she's croak. She yeah. just played and uh, she's over in Australia a good bit, but I saw she was playing on, on the weekend and they won that, so. Yeah. Um, and I'm just trying to get my years in check here because it's nice to all to see what teams are competing with you and where they went in senior. Um, so you finished up minors, you won the All-Ireland. Where was that? Was that it wasn't Crow Park. Where was that, that minor game uh, against Tyrone? Jeez, I actually don't know where it is. I'm terrible at I think it was down in Cork, was it? Okay. Possibly in Cork. I'm well, that's sure. it. that was a big experience. It was It was in a good stadium. Like, you know, it would have been in, yeah. I don't know, the Semple Stadiums or yeah. Turles or Nina was always out there as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I remember thinking it was a big occasion. Like. And what girls in that group moved on then with you into the Dublin panel over the next couple of years? Yeah, so it's mad. Not too many. That's okay. what you're saying, that it came true. But I think with Dublin, it was always if you could pull out three or four girls, maybe yeah. from each year group, you were doing well. From the... Under 16s group, there was only myself and Alwyn Kerry. Yeah. Um, and then Emer Niefed, our sub goalkeeper, was okay. was in for a while. Uh, from the minor group, there was more there. There was a couple of girls who were around for a couple of years, but Leah Caffrey is one that's still there. Mm -hmm. Sarah McCaffrey was in there. Siobhan Woods, Una, who played with me and Grania, they would have been in. So yeah, for the minors, I think it was ma it's mainly me and me and Leah that yeah. stuck from that group for the yeah. whole thing. There was a foundation there of Dublin. We're all just knocking about the seniors, and then to pull a couple from that age group then was um, was a big thing. Turned into 
the five or the the four in a row eventually. Yeah. Um. So, looking into the first senior year, um, I'm gonna fast forward to 2014. That would have been your first All Ireland final. Yeah. That was probably would that be one you look back on and think was that the half time? These were win well. Yeah, against that was Cork. Yeah, some good memories. Um, <laughs> There's plenty of good ones, but I, that's just the first one that you were involved in. Yeah, in they all kind of have a story. I think. Yeah, the first year was we were ahead by ten points. Lindsay Pete was was running riot and scoring goals left and right, and yeah, I think that's where just experience comes in. Uh, Cork knew how to how to get mm. it over the line, and I know people sometimes think, ah, oh, it's not really a thing, but it's only when you are on both sides of that you do learn that it's a it's a mental it's a mentality and Cork just had that they they knew how to stick to their game plan and keep plodding away and yeah, they were going for six in a row weren't yeah, they at yeah, that stage they were. and they were such a strong team you know they have phenomenal players and people on that team as well yeah yeah and then your first All Ireland I'm sure you remember that's a good memory yeah that was 2017 yeah am I right who did you beat in that final Mayo Mayo yeah. and that was um, looking through the stats. How, you had a good game. I know you were playing the match then the following year, but you had a decent game. I think you scored 1-1 that day. Yeah, I think I did. Um, the last few minutes of the game, we just probably opened Mayo up. We started kind of pinging ball longer, and uh, I think it was Sarah McCaffrey put a great ball. Or Molly Lamb actually put a good ball through to Hannah O'Neill. She put an outside of the boot across to me on the back Standard post Hannah. free. So, yeah, yeah, so I could just stick it in then on the right foot, beat the keeper. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was nice. <laughs> nice, nice setup for your first All Ireland. Now, you, did you lose three finals leading yeah. into that? So yes, yeah, so we lost 14, 15, 16 mm. against Cork, mm -hmm. and then obviously 17, someone else knocked Cork out. Yes. So May that was kind of yeah. that. That was Mayo must have knocked Cork out. So it was more of a mental side. You didn't really have that um, weight on your shoulders mm. that year, but you still, when you finished that against Mayo, it was still mm. right. We want to, we want to get Cork at some point. So. And following even for yourself of being such a high level athlete and um, you're playing at the top of your game for the last we're of 10 years when you go how do you get yourself back to go back into pre-season mentally knowing that you have to do all that again to get you to that day like what is the drive because i can imagine 2014 it killed you it was tough for a few weeks and months after that and then it's pre-season again yeah like, i'd love to just know the insight of of someone that has to get back into the I think it changes over the years. Like at that, those years when I was younger, it was just, you're young, you want to learn, you want to stick with these girls for as long as possible and when the opportunities are there. Um, probably as I get older, it's the, it's the competitiveness, it's the winning, it's knowing that it doesn't come around every year. It's, it's just not a given. And you know, I've been so, so lucky to go up with the team that I've gone up with that we've even had those opportunities. Um, and it's probably now that you know, you know, there's you can get knocked out in quarterfinals for every every season for mm -hmm. all the rest of your playing career if you don't have the group of girls around you. So uh, yeah, I think the motivation. I know the girls always slag me that I'm so competitive. I just love winning. I love the feeling that you get from like that. The looking back on those horrible days of pre-season of all the work you did, of the sacrifices you made, but in the end, it's worth it when you get over the line. Um, now it's in hunger, yeah. Like this year, it's just pure hunger. I want to, when we finish up a club, get back as soon as possible, get my own body and my own calves right and make sure I don't have something like that again. And then you just have to want to be, you want, have to want to do a good pre-season in order to set you up, I think, for a long year. Have you ever missed a pre-season? Uh, no, I've never like taken it out. What I had to do was, um, I never struggled with any injuries, and then the last three years, literally just my soleus in my calf. <laughs> it's like mm. the only, the only. Was that what ruled you out of the game? Yeah, that's what put me out on the Saturday before. Like, oh, yeah. Right. Okay. And you know, it just plenty of calf raises. Get, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Barbell. Calf Everything raises. you can do. Yeah. So um, I went to a specialist there in Century Sports Clinic recently, and I've got a rehab program, but I just need to be able to hit that hard mm. once club finishes and get that right. So I'll do that and then get back onto a bit of a pre-season individual program before yeah. we can come back collectively. Brilliant. So 2017, 2018, I did speak, you were a player of the match. Uh, who just you beat Cork. Who just, Cork in 28. Yeah. So you skipped the opportunity of beating them. I'd say that was that felt as if you owed them one. Yeah. Them it, did and it was it was good but it was bad as well. You know, we obviously won in All Ireland. It was absolutely amazing but everyone kind of came out of that looking at each other, oh, it's still not Cork and they still have one right, kind of okay. up on us, but we got that experience then of 
that bit of mindset of we we know how to win mm. you know and as i said that that stuff really counts a lot on the big big days and um, so we had that monkey off our shoulder we know how to win in all ireland we got across the line so now we just need to bring that into if we get to meet cork this year and there was a freshness of mick coming in in 2017 yeah that probably helps it helps any team to get a bit of freshness not that greg didn't do a great job he got his all Ireland finals and whatnot um but the freshness of him coming in with a new team probably helped as well every girl uh, every girl got a new chance and stuff yeah 100 percent and you know yourself yeah as any manager comes in it's a it's a blank canvas a blank sheet and you put your hand up and there's no kind of i suppose prior knowledge of anyone you'll know you'll know your bits from watching them but that doesn't that only counts for a tiny percent compared to week in week out on the training ground so yeah like look what mick brought was obviously success and um behind the scenes he's just an incredible manager to focus on the the minute little things that you might miss and um, so in terms of skills he developed everyone's skills my own skills my left foot the goals that those days were two left foot goals which i wouldn't have dreamt of um i know the previous three years cork just knew like you know you can mark her and shatter her out to her left foot she she hasn't mm. got a left foot which i hadn't really I can do little bits but not much so yeah in fairness mick mick definitely brought a freshness and uh, like Greg did, Greg was brilliant, brought us up after some really difficult, I think, quarterfinals for the girls before that, not being able to get past that quarterfinal stage, I think, since maybe 2010. Um, so between the two of them, that's the management I've kind of had, but the, the two of them have been, yeah, brilliant and very honoured, I suppose, and uh, lucky to have had them. And would Mick be hands-on in terms of taking a lot of drills and stuff, or would he be a manager who steps back and let someone else do it? No, a bit of both. Like definitely, I'd say would want to do as much as possible, but you know, uh, there's a lot involved in it. So um, the the management team there are very good. Did over the years it's changed. You know, maybe at the start he did he did more, and then as the years went on, it depends on the year. Um, the the lads would step in as well now. The last couple of years, and you know, it's it's good. You vary it up. Yeah. When you have the a similar voice, I suppose for so many years, you have to freshen it up and. And that's what they're they're doing quite well. And has there been different coaches during his reign alongside him, or has he had the same backroom team the whole time? He's had a very similar backroom team. New people come in and maybe go out for a year or two, but mostly the lads are the lads are brilliant. Yeah, they're they're together and uh, they've they've stuck by us. So the likes of Mossy and Derek and Paul, um, you know, and you don't want to forget anyone, Willie O'Connor. But you know, there's there's groups of them, and there's a good good old crowd of them, Kathleen Kilreevy. They're they're so loyal to all of us as a team, um, to Mick and even to Dublin. Brilliant and. 2019 Galway yep. in the lovely Lash, rain. Lashing rain, yeah. Lashing rain. That was a really low scoring game. Yeah, poor. But that was your three in a row. Yeah, it was. That was a big milestone then as well. Yeah, look, it was a it was a poor standard game. Um, I think it's just the way like the rain, the weather can ruin a Gaelic football match, especially when you're trying to play free flowing fast football, which is what we love to play and what Galway uh, were playing as well. So I oh, just broke down. I think. I think that summer like we hadn't actually had a lot of rain so mm. you know when you're not training in those conditions it can make it difficult then to go and switch it on in a game so um I think the ball bounced off Sinead Goldrick's knee and went in <laughs> went into the net but you just you take it that's it's still there's still a lot to being able to get over the line on those messy days you know they say the good teams can win can win on their bad days mm. and uh I do think ourselves and Galway didn't give our best performance that day but thankfully we got across the line and the finals back then would have been in the end of September, probably in around this time. Yeah. Do you enjoy more so the All Ireland Finals and the All Ireland series being a lot earlier? Uh, yeah, I do. Just, I think one being a teacher, um, you know, you get a bit of the summer, you just get that bit of downtime. It can be a lot to be back in school in September after the summer. You know, teachers always get sick around this time of the year because you're just exposed to so many different students with different uh, flus and stuff like that. So it's hard to keep yourself 100% um, at the end of September so definitely for those reasons I prefer it and then even gives us a little bit of a break like it does roll into club very quickly but you can go on maybe a holiday for a week or two clear the head be fresh and then and then come back sharp for your, your club championship yeah I think the Lilies LGFA have a really good system where they play the eight league games yeah. and then a bit of a break I like the group stages maybe there's some games there in the groups that aren't as competitive as they should be but I think compared to the men's games I think they they have it down to a T and I don't think there's any backlash is there from the players really with the system? No, not anymore. I think, yeah, as you said, for Leinster for a while, but that's just individual. It was just us and then Mead came in and it was just us and Mead so we were playing each other and then playing Leinster final. Um, but at least they were competitive mm. games and now... That's, that's not still. No, it's last like, year uh, we'd killed air. I think we'd West Mead and so there was, there was more than I've ever come across. So yeah, I think the overall it's very good. The more games you have, 
well, I prefer that anyway. I know most players, they want games rather than huge, huge blocks of, of training. So uh, there's a nice bit of a break in between Leinster and going into championship. And then you've got your two weeks between your next couple of games, which is really a, all you need. You don't want to be, you don't want to be going up to try and peak and then come back yeah. down, you know? Yeah. And then 2020, obviously COVID year, probably a year that a lot of people forget about. Um, who just beat that year? Cork in Cork. an empty Crow Park. Empty Crow yeah. Park. I know the lads won the All Ireland Winter Time. When was the final? Yeah, ours was December twentieth. Yeah, mad. Christmas yeah, crazy. Time. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd say a lot of people I've talked to, a lot of players in the past, and even talking about their COVID club campaigns. If you want to champ to then, they're nearly the years that you remember. I know looking back at my own club in Monaghan, we won a club championship that year and the team was so tight knitted because it was during COVID. It was yeah. the only thing that got you out of the house. Yeah, everyone was everyone was around, you know, no one no one was able to go off and head away. So everyone I remember we were doing like Zoom, literally club Zoom, uh training sessions, you know, you'd be in the back yeah. garden yeah. all hooked up yeah. on the I phone. made a fortune in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say so. It suited you guys down yeah. to the ground. But yeah, it did. It meant when you got to train and everyone was buzzing to see everyone you were allowed and I remember it was a real privilege even that we were able to, we had like passes in our car for when Dublin came back, we were able to travel further than the allowed distance. So, you know, like you take those things for granted when you're able to be like, I can, yeah. I can go to training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was definitely with the club. It was a, it was a nice time to spend even more time mm -hmm. at home with your family and, and then with your club mates as well. Yeah. Very good. And I guess I was going to talk about this topic at the end, but just when I mentioned the GA and the LGFA, there's obviously a situation going on with the uh, with the uh, combined integration. Yeah. Um, personally, I would say here that I know a lot about it, but I don't. And um, I'd like to hear from from you if you could explain how far away, like, is that is that is is there what direction is that going in? Um, personally, I'd like to say I know a lot about it either, okay. but. Um, I don't, uh, what I do know is, you know, yeah, it's definitely something that the players, I think, want uh, overall. I think the, there's a, a vast majority are looking for it. Um, I'm not sure, I suppose the process is maybe slow to do. I know the LGFA have agreed to it. Um, so it's just, when is it going to happen? I think that's what the GPA are obviously very good at pushing that and trying to, trying to accelerate it as much as possible because I think overall what the players see, and maybe we don't know the minute details of everything else, but what we see is that the GAA obviously have huge amounts of resources and to be able to combine all three of them would only expand and, and help not only the players but the, the underage, the juveniles, the club levels, uh, even the school and availability of pitches and all that kind of stuff. There's small things that would be that would be great to have. Um, I know obviously there's been loads of stuff that's been brought in with the LGFA like expenses and all that which has been a huge improvement compared to the last couple of years but it's just to Keep that ball rolling in the right direction, I think. Yeah, Lidl has been a big help with their sponsorship and everything. Yeah, Lidl have they're been still sponsors for the league series and that, aren't they? Yeah, they've been huge. Uh, yeah, like Lidl have been have been phenomenal, and I myself and I'm ambassador with them. And you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't think you could get a company in to support the a team or I suppose uh, players as much as they do. They're always looking, even with ladies Gaelic football, they're looking at how can they push it, how can they support the players, whether that's county, juvenile or club or school, they're really good in the schools as well. Um, so yeah, in fairness to Lidl, they're, they're, they're constantly pushing and sky's the limit for them, I think. Good stuff, okay. Um, 2021 was the year that, this, this is when it that year? We won't, we won't talk about the losing years. <laughs> no. No, anyway, yeah, we lost to, we lost to Mead, All-Ireland final. Oh yeah, so Mead won the two in a row. So it's never nice to get beat by your neighbours. <laughs> And me would say the same. Um, it's all tough for them to be looking at a Dublin win these All Irelands, but they've really excelled over those two years. Was that a bit of a shock, coming from you, being obviously with Dublin? Did you expect them to make the transition up to being All Ireland champions? Because I think they shocked everybody else in Ireland. Yeah, I think in hindsight, there probably was a bit of a shock. Like when you look back now, at the time, I wouldn't have said like we. Uh, we didn't think they were into competition, you know, we, we did as much analysis as we would on any other team. I think where we fell down was we'd never experienced the system they'd play. Gotcha. Um, so we'd never, over all the years, 2014, my juvenile age, we, I'd never experienced a defensive system as, as compact as what Mead had brought. And I think maybe that's what caught everyone on the hop, like it caught... Cork could have beaten them in the in the semi-final. I think Cork were much closer than we probably were on the day to beating them. They had them bet and 
I think something happened in the last few minutes. Um, but yeah, it was just their their system was a, a well worked system. It looked at I suppose the weaknesses in ladies football is, is scoring outside of that that scoring zone, thirty meters, maybe you might have a couple of players who can who can score from thirty five and once mm. they shut down that, um it took a lot of time over the next year to figure out how to break it down. Brilliant. And that system, do you think other teams have tried to replicate that system since? Do you feel as if yourself um with, with I'm not saying Dub. I know that Dublin is not that defensive. Dublin has always been an attacking team. Mm. They've always looked to play nice football, a lot of kicking, especially in uh, the men's and the ladies' game. But do you think other teams have tried to copy that and adapt to that? Yeah, I would say so. Um, it personally, like I, I dislike it. I just think you're. You dislike playing against it, or you just like being in that system with your own team. Either Both. I don't like. Um, I wouldn't like playing the system. I don't, in fairness with club here, it was only one or two years we had to play it where we just didn't have um, the players coming up. We were just weaker. It was one of the years we were weaker and we just had to sit back and see could we counter. Um, but we don't we do not do it. And with Dublin, we, we definitely don't. No. I think when a team plays defensive, you have to be defensive because it's a counter-attack game and everyone has to go and be there and, and get back as well. So, um, yeah, I dislike it personally, but I think it gets the job done. Yeah. You know, there's weaknesses in the game and, and teams are seeing that and you're, you're even seeing it with the men's, you know, they're able to set it up and break and you're seeing it with clubs and underage development. But I do think it's it's just taken away from those classy, natural players that you see, the David Cliffords, the Gooches, the Conor McManus, you know, uh, Conor Callahan's. You're, you're losing some of those amazing moments you've seen over the years um, by playing a kind of quick hand pass game, mm. I think, in my opinion. Like Dublin would have always pressed up high like even going, you know, 13, 14, player on player. And that's what suits Dublin because you have the strength to do that across the pitch. Whereas I would imagine Meath probably felt as if they have a lot of athletes in that team and I think they would benefit. And they obviously did. Um, obviously, they've, they've lost a couple of players since those two years, but you, you can't look past them now moving forward because you're still going to have Alexa Emma and oh, yeah. Stacey Grimes and a couple of other girls that are going to be fighting to try to get All-Ireland back. Yeah, like it's not an easy system then to, to perfect and do well and they did it extraordinarily well, like they did it really well and as you said, you have to have serious work done throughout the year to be able to sustain that for 60 minutes and, you know, we probably thought their their system might falter towards the end or fall away and gaps would open but it didn't, you know, they, they kept going up and down the pitch and I suppose that's what happens. The more you frustrate teams, the more momentum you get, and that keeps mm -hmm. you you pushing on till the end of the games. Brilliant, brilliant. So moving on to probably, your, I would say the personal note. Would have said your captain year was probably the best memory you've had winning All Ireland with, with Dublin. Talk me through the process of. Uh, when, I would imagine Mick pulled you aside and said, "Look, I want you to be captain." Yeah, yeah. Um, geez, I can't really remember the exact phone calls because you know we'd we'd gone through. Uh, 2023, um, we got knocked down the All Ireland quarter final. I was joint vice captain with Neve Collins that sorry, year. Sorry, 2022. Oh, sorry, 2022. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. 2021, yeah, lost to me. It's 2022, Donny Gall knocked yeah. out. And in 2022, yeah. Um, you were vice captain that year. I was, I was joint captain with Neve Collins. Oh, okay, yeah. right. So uh, yeah, that was a phone call and kind of just yeah, it was it was, it was a a nice um, conversation to have, like one I probably wouldn't expect, you know, you don't ever expect, you, you dream and that's a goal to always try and push yourself and be, I suppose, for me it's always how can I push to be the best that I can possibly be and if, like, if everyone's doing that, you're helping the team. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was a phone call during the, the off season of, look, we're thinking about this and would you be willing and want to and of course you're only saying yeah and I was delighted to have Collins by my side then as well because you know, the two of us were new to it. We were taken over from the brilliant Sinead O'Hearn, um, so it was big boots to fill. And it was nice to have someone to kind of bounce your ideas and just to back you up a little bit on some things when you're unsure. You know, confidence is always going to be a big thing when you have such a responsibility on your shoulders. And then last, 2023 was, yeah, my first year myself as captain. Yeah, brilliant. And you, you beat um, Kerry in, in, in that final. Was that that game? Um, you know, fair play, I'd say I was a great moment for you and your family yeah it was to, yeah to lift that cup and yeah look at just going through those years it's been one hell of a journey <laughs> yeah up and down <laughs> and many more to come well we'll see anyway we'll take it year by year at this point but Let's yeah go. we'll uh, we'll go again and see how we get on this year lots Perfect. of hard work to be put in this episode is kindly sponsored by c11 recovery okay guys we are absolutely effing baltic 
<laughs> we are in uh, the Avanto pool. Um, At four degrees. Is it four? Yeah. And how many minutes should we be in these? Mine hasn't pressed play. Oh, you have to hit the button, do you? Do you have to hit something? Play. There we go. The little arrow. This? Yeah. Okay, we are in the Vanta pool, getting a recovery in after doing nothing. <laughs> but... Tore my hamstring. We are now going to discuss the next segment, which is going to be the 16 quick fire questions. Quick fire, quick. Yes, definitely, please. And the reason why it's 16 questions is why, do you know? Because there's 16 weeks in the general club off-season. Oh, okay, very good. Knowledge. So, oh, tough one straight off the bat. All Ireland for your club or your county? Club. Favourite drink of choice? Alcohol first. Are you a big drinker? Not really, are you? Uh, I have got a bit older. Corona. Right. Corona. Alcohol, non-alcoholic, strong blackcurrant. Just a blackcurrant? Yeah. No fizzy drinks? No, I'm not really a fizzy drinks person. Okay. Favourite takeaway order? Uh, if we have to go for a takeaway, Thai. Camille Thai. Thai. Mm. Is there anywhere local you want to give a shout out to? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get your Thai food from? It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your favourite holiday destination? I like all holidays. <laughs> The girls like me particularly. Um, South Africa recently was cool. Oh, Cape yeah. Town. Uh, Garden Route and then Cape Town. Wow, was that with, was that just a holiday? A family yeah, holiday? Just yeah, family holiday. Yeah. Deadly. Deadly. Yeah. Are you cold? Freezing. <laughs> Your favorite pair of boots? Adidas Preds always. Always good. Always. Them, yeah. Not tongue or no tongue. From the start, Adidas Preds. You've no tongue on them. No tongue on those ones. No. Um, my I have another pair at home ready to break in now for the preseason. I think they have a bit of a tongue. Okay, are they the new friends? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, your least favourite football ground to go to? Club or county? Um, I don't really have a least favourite, but any of them that are, you know, when playing them at their own an angle, and it's very hard to get your bearings. Not even pitch? Not even, or yeah, at an angle, it's just hard to work out where you're at right. on the pitch. I, I, there's one jumping out of my head, but I can't remember where it is. So, uh, was it? Yeah, sure. I think it's St. Jude's, somewhere out that way. Okay, probably a cat again. Right, okay. So, what is your morning routine? Um, Let's say, not match days or anything, but just general. Normal day. Up slowly. <laughs> Takes me a while to get to bed. Many alarms, many snoozes. Five snoozes, maybe. Right. Uh, that's on a good day. Couple of snoozes, yeah, up, brush. Brush the teeth, wash the face, change the breakfast. Nothing. Coffee? No, not a coffee. Not a caffeine drinker. Oh, you not? Don't drink caffeine. No, decaf tea, no coffee. No uh, caffeine before matches? I will take caffeine gum. Gum. Oh, works well then. Was that advice to you? Uh, yeah, a nutritionist. Just, there's obviously benefits in the caffeine, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, interesting. That's something that I could definitely learn from. Um, your, sorry. It's very cold here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Last minute penalty. You are one point down. Do you put it over the bar for extra time or goal to win it? Ah, uh, goal to win it. If you're a penalty taker. Absolutely, yeah. Penalty. I can't believe some people would go to extra time. Pre-game ritual, any superstitions? No, not superstitious. Um, just like to have a ball in my hand. In the dressing room? Yeah, and um, before when I'm eating, if there's a ball lying around, I'll just take it. I don't need to be bouncing it or soloing right. it, but in my hand. Would I you take one out of the house? Uh, yeah, if I... If, Maybe they're already gone advanced to us. I'd have one in the boot of my car anyway, so. Okay, interesting. Bring that with me. Uh, do you track performance or your own school? Do you have a whoop or anything? or Have a whoop. Have, yeah. yeah, have a whoop. Um, yeah, I just like that for recovery, really. Um, had a couple of years of being injured, so thought that that would help. And it's the main thing I focus on with it. There's so much more I could get out of it, but sleep is a huge thing. Yeah. You know, sleep is the... The one simple thing that we could all get right, but we all probably get it wrong. Yeah. Um, so I definitely look at it for my sleep. Right, okay. And are you daytime or a nighttime game person? Probably daytime, yeah. I I think I train well on Sunday mornings and daytime, whereas evenings, I think you're just, you know, more okay. tired. Midweek or weekend game? Weekend. Okay. Hangover cure routine? Bed. <laughs> Not leave the bed. You know when you wake up at seven o'clock. Yeah. The key is to go back to sleep. Yeah, because you're still half. Go back, have a drink of water. You go back to sleep. Yeah. Perfect. Your toughest marker. Uh, Sinead Goldrick, Nicola Ward would definitely be up there as well. It's probably it. Good. Okay. Favorite position. 
I'm sorry, Leah Caffrey. Leah Caffrey. But I don't often come across her. Yeah, you're usually half forward or back. Yeah. yeah. Half forward, or I was full forward last year, but. What's your favourite position then? Half forward, yeah, like centre Center, forward. Wing? I was wing, I don't know if I have the legs anymore. Right. Let, let the young ones do wing forward. Um, <clears throat> I do it if I, ha- if I needed to, obviously, but yeah, like centre forward. Very good, okay. Last one, we're getting there. Yeah. Last minute winning pass into you, and you're playing full forward. Who was kicking it into you? Who, who do I want passing me the ball? Yeah, last minute, you have to win this ball. Um, who gives it? Orla Nolan? Yeah. Good pass, yeah. Brilliant. She'll give, she'll give a nice one bounce pass into yeah. the space where I'm going. Brilliant. Yeah. Right. Oh, good. Give me out. Oh. And we're done. <laughs> Red legs. Whoa. That'll be good for tomorrow anyway. Fucking toes. You should have wore socks. We are going to play a little game, which is going to be a brand new segment in this season. It's been going down very well. Right. Okay, and you don't know what this game is. No prep on this. It's called uh, Winner Stays On. Okay. Now, essentially, I'm going to say two players in the in the ladies' game. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to pick which player you would like on your team. Okay. So it's nothing personal here. And then the person you pick, I'll give you another player until we get down to one final player. Does that make sense? Right. Okay. Okay. Starting off, Breed Stack or Sinead Goldrick? Goldie. Goldie. Goldie or Core Staunton? Goldie. <laughs> Why would you pick a dumb player? <laughs> well, there's more dubs to come then. Oh. Goldie. Amy Mackin. Oh. God, that's sad. Goldie so might <laughs> watch. That was supposed to be tough. I know Goldie's scary and everything, but. <laughs> Goldie. Goldie. Okay, let's just do it because I'm a forward. Amy Mackin. Okay, Amy Mackin. Amy Mackin, Noel Healy. Amy Mackin, Noel Healy's older, Noel. I'd bring you back any day, Noel, but you're a bit older now. Amy Mackin, Sinead Ahern. Amy Mackin, for the same reason. Mm. Amy Mackin, Vicky Wall. Amy Mackin. Amy Mackin, Neve Collins. Amy Mackin's going to win. You think so? She's <laughs> yeah. your favourite. Ah, yeah, she's unbelievable. Amy Mackin, Hannah Terrell. Mm. Uh, Hannah. Hannah or Emma Duggan? Hannah. I've already got a, a right footer free taker. I need to keep my left footed free taker. Hannah or Louise Nimura Herty? Uh, Hannah. Hannah or Leah Caffrey? Leah, my co captain can have to pick her. <laughs> Leah or Kier McInesby? Leah. Leah or Lauren McGee? Leah. Leah or Lorraine Scanlon? Leah. Leah or Nicola Ward? Me and Nicola have had some good battles, so I'll stick with Leah. <laughs> Leah or Ashley Maloney? Leah. Leah or Olivia Dibley? Similar with Nicola, but I'll stick with Leah. So Leah is your, your final one, the final player of all those. Yeah, I can only take him one, can I? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Fair play. Leah it is. <laughs> okay, Carla, we are on to probably our most fun segment of the video okay it was all very serious there the last hour but we're going to move on to our shooting challenge top of the table is rory Began and sam i might have to double check that i know rory's in the top on the leaderboard he has 10 out of 11 possible scores and what we're going to do is we're going to take three shots across the 13 three across the 21 three around the d and one on the 45 now the catch is you see the middle one on the 13 and the middle one on the 21? That has to be left foot. Right. But apart from that, you can go left foot, right foot, off the ground, whatever you like. Now, 45 yards out, metres out, is um, it's worth two points. Confident? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, look, at you are a uh, highly cl- uh, top-class free kick taker. Warmed up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to really focus here, OK? And I want you to try and act as if this is a match scenario and do your routine, OK? And See how you plan out over the next 10, 11 shots. I won't put you off. My routine would be warmed up. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, take your time, okay? Yeah, yeah, thanks. No pressure. Wind against me, we'll just note that. (laughs) 
Yep. Well, oh, just about. Well done. After a flyer. <laughs> tough ones. All, the first one's always the toughest. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you couldn't have put us on that one, though. No. no. Now, this is left foot. I've seen these miss, so take your time. Okay. Thanks. Kevin O'Callum from Kildare missed one from here, so. <laughs> You won't make a free take, uh, free taking coach, Ricey. No. <laughs> I've never taken a free on me left. Have you not? No. Oh! You need to put your sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in that car? I hope not. <laughs> That's a Gaelic club first. A like walkway that. second. So we'll hope she doesn't watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I will say this corner is the one that catches everybody out. Okay, a, a lot of people, 90% of people have missed this shot for a couple of reasons. They go left foot and then they say, oh, I should have went outside of the right. But I want to treat this, if you get a, who takes your left foot at freeze? Hannah Cyril, not me. Right, okay. <laughs> so if Hannah wasn't on the pitch and you needed to hit this, I want you to treat this as if you're taking on a match, okay? Right. Well, I wouldn't kick it on my left. You wouldn't in a game? No. Unlucky, Carla. You see what you're trying to do? Bend it in. Mm, not bad. It's unlucky. We're going to stay now in the 21. That's two from three. Okay, so this one up. <sighs> Lovely. Good stuff. Three from four on a roll. So you're going to skip that Rory. one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you're the 45 is going to get me. This you're one. Gonna, you're going to skip that one and go into the 21 left foot from here. So three from four, yeah. Should I not hit the car? Just put it over and let. Everyone else worry. Well done. Stuff. No her car hit. There you go, yeah. We're good. Four from five, going well. Skip this one. On to the last one on the 21. And hamstrings intact. All yes, good. thank God. Well, I shouldn't have said that, you know that. You're well warmed up now. Yeah. Take your time. Wait for that wind to die a bit. Ah, curling. Oh! What do you think? Was that over? No. <laughs> no, you're very honest. It oh, was not. I would have had to check the camera. This okay. One. <laughs> yeah, so we are, what are we on? One, two, three, four, four out of six. Yeah. Okay, let's keep this going, okay? It's one out of one. Work that one out after. <laughs> well done. Five out of seven. You're going to head into the corner here. The lefties, I don't. Now, this year I'll tell you I should start practicing these. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be my off season now. Well, now you know you can kick free your left foot down the middle. No, I wouldn't do that, you're joking. <laughs> that could end up at the corner flag. I can go left foot here just to... So this routine, the freak, have you always done this? Or you just make it up in your head, like in terms over the last couple of years? Uh, yeah, no, well like... I suppose that the more frees I started taking and the more responsi responsibility I had, that was when the importance of it came in there yeah. Yeah, yeah I think the main thing with a routine is now look I don't know it's not like we get the Johnny Sexton coaching that they get for their kicking um but Mick would be very good as I said focusing on those little details and I think the routine distracts you from what the kick is okay. it also gives you your points into what you're you know when you're doing it you're thinking I'm thinking the same things over and over again certain teaching points or right. whatever and have you worked with anybody like individually 
No, not hugely. Like Mick would have yeah. done a lot of kicking, even with the senior men. Mm. He would have done a lot of that, so he would work with us as free takers. Um, but not no specific mm. uh, free taking coach, I suppose, would come on. And one thing I actually meant to ask you as well in the chat was, we skipped on a wee bit and we didn't even really talk about AFL, but that's something that came in my head even when I was driving here. Were you ever mentioned about going to the AFL as being an athlete or? Yeah, I was. Uh, what happened was 2019, we were playing Galway and there was a man, it was kind of like only starting off then. I think um, there wasn't many pe people over there. Of course, Staunton had gone over and that was kind of the one big player that had gone over. And I know uh, Neve McAvoy and Sinead Goldrick then went over later in that season, but there was someone in touch and they had said, look, would you come over? We'll fly you over. It was the 28th of September. It was the day they were to fly me over to Australia feel it up for two weeks or whatever and then come back and um, I was like, you know, amazing opportunity, go go and have a look for a while. But the All-Ireland was on the 25th and I was to go to Mick Bohan and tell him two days after the All-Ireland I was flying out to Australia. So I said, no thanks. After the All-Ireland final? Yeah, yeah. Would that be something that we would do? I mean, the final's over. Um, it would have been, but you know, I would have had to tell him before that. And at that time it wasn't a big thing like you know this it was a big deal then yeah now it's probably not as much of a big deal and mick probably would have been fine with it or he would have been fine with it but in my head i just felt like to have that would be a bit of a distraction and yeah. i trained for seven months so he would have had a no before the final and that would yeah. have obviously taken away from it that's yeah, understandable and immediately after the final i think it was going to be kind of too short too a press job of you know we're flying over there was actually apparently he was in talks with myself and olivia divley from galway yeah. the two of us were playing whether that's true or not, I don't know, but she never went her. and I never went, <laughs> right. so. <laughs> you didn't have a chat beforehand, no, so we're not no going to do it. No, no chats beforehand. Um, and nothing's came of it since? No, to be honest, then I went back and did a master's in teaching yeah. and, you know, football and stuff came and um, look, it's probably probably not for me. Um, I'd love to give it a short go if I, when I finish football and go over and uh, experience Australia. I haven't actually done travelling in Australia, so, you know, never know down yeah. the line, but no, not during my, not during my football career yeah. now. Very good, okay, I'll let you hit this one. We'll back back to concentration back, time. Back to focus. <laughs> from eight okay yeah, yeah. so looking real we're looking at this one you said you're not overly confident with the 45. this How is to be emma duggan is it this is to go no, level, to level with emma ah oh, sugar <laughs> that was a big deal <laughs> <laughs> damn it emma <laughs> right. well you have to don't let her beat you so this is the one right take <coughs> your time right wind's behind you here Ah, brilliant. Well Just done. cars in the, in the drop zone. Good stuff, brilliant. So we are six out of nine. There's not a chance I'm kicking this. Let me just double check the leaderboard, hold on. He let Rob a few yards. Did they rob some yards? Yeah, I can, I can allow it. Where is the leaderboard? I rob a few, so. I was only practicing freeze or outside of the boot there, club training, so you never know. <laughs> it can't bounce. Sorry. Yeah, she's on six. Damn it. We'd have to settle for a draw. So yes, Emma's on six. Vicky, you beat Vicky. Vicky got two. <laughs> nice one, Vicky. Okay. <laughs> so look, at, you're going out of the hands. You're going to drive it outside of the boot. Yeah. And see how we get on, okay? How many, are, how many how many robs am I allowed here? Ah, look, at, in a game, I think referees will probably le let you. As much as a ref would allow. Yeah, which is probably a lot these days with the referees. Depends, <laughs> depends who you're playing. <laughs> Take your time, just don't get injured. Well, there's no routine on this, I've never done this no. before. <laughs> no. No. Oh, I feel like I need to retry that. <laughs> Carla, well done, what was that, five? Six. Don't you take my six, I got this six, one. Six, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Carla, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks very much. Okay, I hope you had fun. Yeah, brilliant. Didn't pull any muscles, so no. <laughs> not too bad. Really, really good to have you on board. And guys, at home, please remember to subscribe, okay? A lot of you that are viewing are not subscribed. 
and please let us know in the comments who you want to see in future episodes of the off season and we're going to see you very very soon great to have you oh, great and delighted to be able to come out and spend this spend the afternoon with us brilliant looking forward to seeing it